Welcome back to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. My name is Hobo Tom. And my girlfriend is still at work. Oh, there is the Hobo Cat. Sauntering out as she always does. Helps more than I do. I just kind of live here. Sometimes. Again, welcome back to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. I'm here and I'm going to talk about the greatest Royal Rumble. Oh! It's actually kind of a fun show. I know I couldn't do any live stream because I've kind of been banned from a couple things. And I had a couple other things to do online today. So it's not one of those things I could really watch a lot. But I got to listen to it. Can't live stream. I'm still being punished for that. So hopefully about 50 more days, I think. I think it's under 60 now. So we'll see. We will get live streams. And then hopefully also get to do Skype with my girlfriend on this. I have to I have to figure out some technical aspects. Again, this is a hobo production. As you can tell by the video stream quality. But again, please like and subscribe. Also feel free to comment and leave an email at hobo and girlfriend at gmail.com we will get back to you one way or another we'll get back to you in the past I've comment I've recommented and sent other video clips to again I have gotten in touch with people who comment also shout out to those who subscribe to Mirtha Northernstrom I'm getting that name wrong but again the two people that have subscribed publicly Thank you very much. I thrive on your support. But now to get to the greatest Royal Rumble. But before that, again, just another shout out. Shameless plugs. Southern Pro Lucha Libre. Woohoo. Coming to Daytona Beach, hopefully soon by the end of the month. Not the end of this month. Maybe by the end of May. We'll see about that. And I'll try and get some video clips for that for everyone. But now it is time to talk about the greatest Royal Rumble! Let's get ready to rumble! It was fun. It was a really good show. Really good show. There were some high points. There was, there was only one or one low point. I'll kind of go through things bit by bit. I did miss the pre-show. I had a couple things to do. But they started off playing the National Anthems of Saudi Arabia. And I think it was the United States National Anthem, which was actually pretty cool. I mean, considering where everyone's coming from. So, I mean, that was cool. They, they, they did both. Again, kind of brings them to highlight both countries. Even though there were no women wrestling, you know, that's a whole cultural issue there over there. I think... I don't think it was in Saudi Arabia, but one of the other Middle Eastern countries, Alexa Bliss and Sasha... Banks wrestled, but they had to wear like a full bodysuit. And in that heat, you know what? I don't mind it. Go a day without female wrestling or, or, or revolution. Again, my girlfriend say bad things or say that I say bad things. So that's always a good sign. Sometimes. Um, again, this is the greatest Royal Rumble. Start off. As a shot with Cena versus Triple H, John Paul Levesque, Hunter Hearst Helmsley was there. The really neat thing about this is that they gave really everyone their WrestleMania entrance. So there were fireworks. Yay! Who doesn't like fireworks? This guy likes fireworks. Or you like fireworks too out there, YouTube community. So again, it was fun. They, they, made, they made it feel special. This is a little bit more than a house show, not quite a pay-per-view. I know there's discussions, is this a pay-per-view? Is it not a pay-per-view? Is it a house show? Is it not a house show? It was that nice in-between. It didn't feel like one of the big five. It did feel better than some of the other like house shows like Backlash, great, definitely better than Great Balls of Fire. Um, where are some others? Again, all the minor pay-per-views, not quite the big four or big five. 
if it did have that WrestleMania vibe to it, and it just seemed more, it just seemed a lot more than a house show. Again, you start having fireworks. It, it is something, and they all came out. They all came out to their their entrance. So it was it was good. Uh, the first match again, the great entrances by John Cena versus Triple H. Eh, it was it was it was it was okay. This was a cheeseburger match. It was it was, it was kind of fun. The, the the one thing, again, John Cena said, "You you can't see me." I don't remember. I think Triple H kicked out of the five moves of death. So that's so that's always a good thing. And it was a lol. Cena wins, but it was entertaining. It again, it, it had that big big show feel to it. And it made it feel important. So, yeah, it was good. I got a che cheeseburger match. One of these days, I am going to have graphics somewhere probably up this corner to describe my matches. Again, this is a hobo production. So, we'll see how things go. The second match, I mean, this was almost a match, match of the night. It was... The cruiserweights, it was Kalisto versus Cedric Alexander. If they could do this on 205 during any of their regular TV tapings, 205 would pull better ratings than Raw and SmackDown combined. My God, it was fast pace, great cruiserweight action, fast, constant, constant, constant. I mean, you had like the typical rest hold, but it went. Move, spot, 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 rest hold, spot, spot, move, move, run, 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 ropes, 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 flippy stuff. I mean, it was just fun. They they did the rest holds with purpose. It played into the matches. It just wasn't there to be there. And it, again, if this, is, this was a filet mignon match. And this is the cruiserweights. The second match of the night is filet mignon. I'm like, whoa. Not only did the Cena Triple H match kind of start the show off huge, but it kind of really continued though. And it, again, it's a flame beyond match. This was great. There was a whole bunch of moves that you don't haven't seen on TV. There was a version of the Spanish Fly, I think Corey Graves called it, a seated seated springboard Spanish Fly. Wow. I've seen Spanish, the standing Spanish fly and the Spanish fly at the top rope. A seated springboard Spanish fly. Yeah. Again, it was an. <laughs> it was a great finish, even though Cedric Alexander won. He reversed the Selena Del Sol, the SDS, into the lumbar check. Amazing match. Flay Mignon. If I could give it four thumbs up, I could. I only have two. I'm sure my girlfriend would have, would have given it a five hard match. When she only gives a two hard match, it's a top, top, top. Wow. It'll be interesting to see in news reports what Meltzer gives us. Again, really good. Super fun. Enjoyed it. Loved it. And this was followed up by another Flay Mignon match. So you have Flay, Flay. Yes. That's what you want. You want to be entertained. If you're going to pay the money to actually view this, if you're going to pay the thousands of dollars to sit ringside or, or sit in the arena itself, I mean, the seats were the ringside seats were probably 10000 I have no idea, though. But I'll get, in, I'll get into that in a moment. It was just amazing. And again, the quality that they can put on, it's like, why can't they do this for us in, here in the States on a TV show? Again, it is kind of a one-off deal, so hey, you never know. But again, the second Flay Mion match, and one of these days, I have some icon up around here going around somewhere, and Hobo Production will increase itself somehow. But you had the deleter of worlds of Woken! Matt Hardy and Broken Bray Wyatt or Woken Bray and the versus Seamus and Cesaro and the crowd ate it up. I haven't heard this much going on between Delete 
the bar, delete, the bar, delete, the bar. Since the four-way chant in Peru of delete, too sweet, obsolete, fuck it. So again, it was really good. It was fun. It was amazing. The acquisition or the procurement or the expedition of gold has continued. And <laughs> a kind of funny thing, just realized this in a post interview, that Matt Hardy wins gold every April. And going back to WrestleMania, that's true. For us, at least WrestleMania 33. So again, really fun match. Amazing tag team war. If you want to see a tag team match that explains what tag team wrestling should be, I mean, this is one of those things, one of those matches you need to watch. I mean, there's great tag team chemistry between Ray Wyatt. I think he's kind of coming around to the gimmick. Matt Hardy's amazing with the crowd. Caesar and yeah, Cesaro. And Sheamus, I mean, they're just great technicians all around. Cesar always was one. Sheamus has, has really grown into one now. But it was really great tag team action, really great tag team dynam dynamics. All the double team moves, spot on. I loved it. It was a fun match. Again, Matt is so good at, at getting the fans involved. And just not, it's not about beach ball mania or what, what. Although sometimes the what chant is warranted, and I, I can understand why you have beach ball mania, but Matt gets everyone involved. It gets them invested into it, and once you get invested into a match, it's amazing. So again, so me on again, great back and forth. And yes, the Woken Tag Team won. So this will be Bray Wyatt's third championship run, tag team the world, and tag team a second time, and it's really good. Again, the expedition of gold! And probably the funniest thing happened after this. They had the interview, or after a, a couple of matches, kind of the down point of the night. But I want to get into it now because it's just so good. They were interviewing Jeff Hardy in the back, and Matt Hardy just kind of sneaks up behind him, being like the older brother. I think he's the older brother. And, and Jeff Hardy just kind of, kind of mimics. He's like, yeah, I know he's here. And you hear Matt, yeah! And it was funny just to see the two play off each other. Jeff Hardy looks like he's just done with the brother Nero gimmick. But hey, it's my brother. I'm gonna pl I'm, I'm gonna make it. Might make my brother happy. Oh, again, it was really good. Like I did want to comment on this. I have no idea how much those front seats were, front row seats. But it was a lazy boy leather recliner that I could have swam in. I mean, you just see everyone back there like this saying, yeah, this is wrestling. I know, I think WrestleMania tickets front row were, I think were $2,000 plus. Dollars. Where I was sitting was about five. My sister and her friends were, was 200 something. So, I mean, you're paying two, say two to 5,000, say 5,000 at the high end for really just a nicely designed padded folding metal chair. I mean, to be in that lazy boy recliner, I, I want to say that's going to be about at least 10,000 for the front row. And again, out there in that part of the world, if you're still a magnate, yeah, you can afford ten thousand dollars for it. I think the only other time I've seen seat prices that high, or those type of seats, I think of the Jacksonville Jaguars. They have like the elite seating area, but they do have kind of like the really fancy theater chairs. Not 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 quite the lazy boys that you can swim in. But again, if you, if you go to the Cobb Theater, and this is by no means a shout out to Cobb Theaters, which I'm not really a fan of because their seats are way too comfortable. You need to hold people. That doesn't seem like a movie experience. Again, I'm a hobo. I go to the, I miss the old fashioned folding seats. 
and sneaking in my box of juju of well docs and sometimes a bottle of soda at the regal cinema that's the thing it's just a proper movie going experience not the whole cop theater thing save that for another day though again it just looked amazing they were whoo high styling whoo profiling whoo gonna be huff all night whoo cares and this led to kind of like the, the worst match of the night. It was Jeff Hardy versus Jinder Mahal for the U.S. Championship. This was a ham sandwich. It just seemed to, it, it just didn't flow. It wasn't smooth. A lot of botches. I mean, Jeff Hardy won with a swanton bomb, but it seemed really discombobulated about stuff happening. And they, they didn't seem they were really comfortable. Again, ham sandwich. Not bad. I mean, it wasn't great. Ham sandwich is a ham sandwich, guys. And there you have Chris Jericho giving a really funny promo, just r running down everyone. Even Mojo Rally made the made the list of Jericho. It's probably a high point in his career. This led this then led to the another good cheeseburger kind of cheeseburger mash. Kind of you went from here. Up here, then here, and then it went down. So it kind of came came back a bit. And this led to the Usos versus the Bludgeon Brothers. It seemed pretty quick. At this point, the, the show was really progressing along pretty fast. Um, it was good action, quick tags by the Usos, just the way you would expect a tag team facing the Bludgeon Brothers would do. Yeah, high-flying Usos. They know how to get again. They know how to get the crowd involved. You have super kick parties all over the place. Um, unfortunately, they lost. But again, it, there was no Naomi there, probably for a lot of cultural reasons. I think. he was in there to distract them. And again, it, it had that house show feel because no titles really changed hands, <clears throat> which I'll get into a little bit later as well, which seemed really odd. But again, it was a good, it was a good, it was a good fun time. Again, good match. The Bludgeon Brothers retain their belts. Cheeseburger match, really good. But then we get in, <laughs> get into another fillet. So you start off here, go up here, go down, way down, go back up, and again. Shoot back up again. A souffle on the on match. Ladder match was awesome. The only thing it was missing was a muscle buster from Samoa Joe. Uh, you had Seth Rollins versus Samoa Joe versus Finn Blore versus The Miz in a ladder match for the IC title. And a lot of it, if you know the history of Samoa Joe and Finn Blore, it felt like NXT. An NXT match. The only thing it was missing was a muscle buster. And in 19... Old. I mean, other than that, it was great. Seth proves again why he's an IC champion. He is probably the fastest man on his feet. He's the cowardly Seth. He lets everyone does the hard work for him. And he somehow manages to steal that victory. Classic Seth Rollins, the architect. Again, super fun match. I mean, uh, there were spots all over with ladders. Miss hit the skull crushing finale on Joe on top of a ladder. I mean, Rollins retains. Finn got busted up. I think he got cut by the belt when Seth kind of almost grabbed it out of his hands. So again, it was it was really fun. Next, you have four <clears throat> NXT wrestlers from Saudi Arabia. The Davari brothers come out with a Iranian fag. They get booed. I mean, that was almost to the point where you're like, dude, they're not going to leave here without getting a beatdown by the crowd. But it, of course, the four faces beat, beat, beat up the two heels. And again, it was good quality stuff. Another filet mignon match. AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura can do no wrong. It goes back to the Bullet Club versus Chaos, 
and the way they had their matches in New Japan Pro Wrestling. It was awesome. Again, very good match. Back and forth strikes, wrestling, rope running, top rope spots. It's a filet mignon match, even though it's a death to finish, baby. Nobody wins. It was a double count out. AJ can finally say, it's like, well, I got you at least. It was a good beat down on the outside of the ring. Double count out. I'm happy. It's probably the way, that's actually the way it should have been for this match. Again, flaming on match. That's one, two, three, four filon, four filon, can't even say it anymore. Four filet mignon matches in one night for one show. WWE, where is this during pay per views? You mean for one show, you get the fourth? Actually, there's going to be five. Five, five star, two hearts, flaming on matches <clears throat> on some glorified house show. And you can't get one on one of your big five pay per views. Eh. Give me better quality WWE. Blame you. Again, they're catering to hobos though in the States. Not people getting $1,000 front row seats. Getting $10 bleacher seats. Let's let um, to a cheeseburger match. Again, Rusev versus Undertaker. Aiden English is really good. Aiden English got booed until he said it's Rusev Day. Again, really fun match. Gives a great entrance. The Undertaker has a long entrance, though. And I'm not a big fan of long entrances. I like entrances with purpose. I'm going to be able to hear the person's theme. Say, I know who that is. Comes to the ring. Good. Undertaker, I think, like, takes like seven to ten minutes for him to get down. Granted, I know he had hip surgery. If I had hip surgery, you'd have to bring me in on one of those old fashioned ring carts. Yeah, from WrestleMania 3. If you're old like me, you know what I'm talking about. But again, it was fun. It was a little bit back and forth. Uh, Rusev. I still think Rusev should always come in on a tank. I mean, that just looks like Rusev. A really light... The thing is, the whole show, the crowd was lively. There were no what. The crowd seemed involved. It was a longer match than Cena versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania. I thought it was going to be a three-minute match. It turned out, I think, seven or eight minutes, something like that. But again... A lively crowd. <laughs> Aiden English is just there to get beat up. Tries to interfere. And uh -uh, you do not do that with The Undertaker. You get very too. Again, uh, the end of the match showed Undertaker shove Rusev into the casket. Aiden English did stop it once. Couldn't stop it the second time, and that was a mistake, buddy. Undertaker said, I'm done with this foolishness. Tombstoned it in English. But I'm on, threw him into the coffin on top of Rusev. Slam the lid shut. Match over. Undertaker wins. But again, really good stuff. I mean, it's so hard to say. It wasn't a flaming yawn match. It was a good quality cheeseburger match. I mean, it was better than the match The Undertaker had at WrestleMania, and that's in the States. So, you have to take it for what, is it, for what it is, I guess. Again, this, this led to another ham sandwich match. It was a kind of wonky finish. You have Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns in a steel cage. Both wrestlers got the WrestleMania entrance. They spared no expense with the fireworks. I like fireworks, especially if you're supposed to be the Universal Champion and the Universal Challenger. Fireworks. Boom. 
Boom, boom. I like. Me likey, likey. Again, it was a, for this was the only time the audience got quiet too, which was weird. Yeah, the the two supposed biggest champions, or, or the universal champion and the challenger, and it's the quietest the crowd got. Paul Heyman is still great. Master of the Broctagon. I can't even do his voice. Again, the only thing Paul Heyman's missing is a uh, cell phone. And he's Paulie Dangerously all over again. And makes me smile. Shows my age, too. It just kind of opens up a typical Brock Roman match now. Kind of what you expect, which... Again, it's kind of a low point. A suplex, suplex, spear, Superman punch, suplex, elbows, gloves come off, chair, Superman, false finish, suplex, F5, blocked F5, spear through cage, Brock wins. Because he was the first to hit the floor. Yeah. Yeah, and the ham sandwich. Nothing really special. I was kind of surprised Lesnar won. Just that, that weird finish. I, I, I guess it was the plan. Either that or someone's getting fired for not making that cage right and screwing up. But again, that's just. One hobo's opinion. You never know what the. This was really fun. I'm I'm not gonna go through all 50 participants, because because that would just be excessive. But you had um, the first entrance, Daniel Bryant. Again, that was kind of cool. And then number two was Dolph Ziggler, and it was and it was it was fun. It was, it was what you expect from a Royal Rumble. Um, so a lot of notable highlights here. So your Mark Henry came in number five. Mike Canales. We have the quickest elimination. Record elimination. Again, one of the fun one of the fun things about this is that they had from all four brands, you had Raw wrestlers, SmackDown wrestlers, 205 wrestlers, and a couple calls from NXT. And the, even NXT names, I'm like, oh, whoa, wait, I, I, I've seen them. So again, it kind of makes it fun. Uh, you had some some vets, some old time wrestlers. You had Hornswoggle come in twelve. Rey Mysterio came in twenty eight. Tucker Knight from Heavy Machinery came in twenty three. Baba Ture, who I remember watching, really big African person, came in. 30 something. Roderick Strong was 34. They had Tony Nese from 205 Live come in. So, again, it was really good. Um, my prediction I did predict it right. Braun Strowman won. He came in 40 something. I picked it. <laughs> <laughs> Titus O'Neil has to learn how to run. And <laughs> as he comes running down to reload to the ring, you're Whoa, whoa! He has to focus because he tripped. He's running, he tripped and slid underneath the ring. Bacha mania. And the thing is you have to get in the ring first, not underneath the ring. To be a part of the Royal Rumble. So again, that was kind of neat. I'm I'm sure Vince was laughing. The whole announce crew was laughing. Who who was it? You know, during this match, they were arguing about chinchilla coats. Something like that. It was just kind of filler. Crowd got involved whenever the wrestlers came in. You could hear him chant the countdown: ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. Bah. And again, it was, it was kind of cool. Shane O'Mac came in. Shane O'Mac might be dead, though. 
he got put through a table. He got powerbombed from the ring to the outside table. Ooh. Not, not good looking. And, and there was no air pad underneath the ring this time. Again, it was really fun, though. Shannon Mac might be dead, but we'll see. And Kevin, uh, Kevin Owens was there. It was a really, it was really fun though. Again, it was, it went quick, and I think that's the thing that other WWE main events, especially WrestleMania, lack is that there's, there was a real flow to it. Even though you had two ham sandwich matches, which which kind of sucked the life out of things. I mean, this was a flaming on Royal Rumble, and for being a, a cluster organization of stuff, hey, it was fun. I enjoyed it. It put a smile on my face. It made my day go quicker. It was fun. I enjoyed listening. I enjoyed listening to it. Again, they just kept the pacing so good. And that was it. Overall, hey, I'd have to give it a surf and turf paper, surf and turf house show, which is wow. I mean, you have five flame and neon matches. You have the two ham sandwiches and a cheeseburger. The only thing that's missing was a surf and turf match. It's one of those things is feast or famine. Give me the A or give me the F. It was fun. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. My name is Hobo Tom. My girlfriend is at work. I saw my cat wandering around the house somewhere. Give a couple shout outs. We have Southern Pro Lucha Libre. Coming to town, hopefully, the end of May. NXT is coming to Daytona Beach this or next Saturday, Cinco de Mayo. So, hopefully, you can get some shots in of there. If I go there, I might go fishing. I haven't gone fishing in a long time. I need to get some fish. If I do go there, come back from my Saturday feast, I'll show you my tostada burgers. Yeah. Also, I know this is a really cheap plug. Simon Miller from What Culture? Good luck this Saturday. Always have to cheer people that make it into the industry that you're kind of familiar with and that you've kind of seen before. I know when he came, I know when they came, when the World Culture guys came to Orlando. It was, it was really neat to see them, and I got a chance to talk to Jack the Jobber, a really good down to earth person. You can talk, I could. Talk wrestling probably until you got bored of hearing about it for the upteenth time. But hey, it's always neat to see those personalities. So again, good luck to you, Simon Miller. Best wishes in your own Battle Royal or Royal Rumble. Whatever they're holding there for Defiant Wrestling. There's your cheap plug. Again, please like, share, and subscribe. And email at Hobo and girlfriend at gmail.com. Everyone have a good, fun, safe.